This is a Big Mac. An incredibly iconic American sandwich from the golden arches of McDonald's, the juggernaut of fast food. You know what it's all about. Two patties, three buns, secret sauce. Some people might say if it's not broke, don't fix it. But this is YouTube, so we're going to turn this Big Mac into a sushi Big Mac. Sounds great, but first I need to venture out from my apartment in Pittsburgh to the open sea. This is where the bluefin tuna resides, where the water is rough and the scurvy is rougher. The hunt is on. It was a long day, but right before nightfall, I finally got my prize. Just kidding. My good friend Gordon and I actually just drove over to our favorite local fish market and bought some with some cold hard cash. Let's go for it. We're going to be using some crispy fried sushi rice as our bun, so we need to prep our rice properly because we have to have respect for ourselves and the rice. Before we can start cooking it on the stove top though, we need to wash it because rice is extremely starchy, which is why the water gets white and cloudy whenever you add water. You don't have to wash it to the point where it's crystal clear or anything, but four to five times should suffice. And even though the Sushi Big Mac might be a crime against humanity, we still want it tasting delicious, which I promise it will be. So stick around, your attention span can handle it. With the rice clean, we can transfer it into a pot and then fill it with water. We want to bring both up to a boil so that the rice can steam away and absorb all the liquid remaining. Once it's boiling, cover and simmer for 20 minutes. Since I don't have an actual rice cooker, I plan to create a tight seal using aluminum foil and a lid. It's not perfect, but it gets the job done, kind of like this channel in general. When the rice is done cooking, let it rest off heat for an additional 10 minutes. In the meantime, we can get to work on preparing our vinegar bath for our rice. Just a combo of rice, vinegar, sugar, and a little bit of salt. This combination is why sushi rice is typically a little sweet and acidic, and most importantly, tastes good. Give it the old college try on mixing it together with a spoon because we want it to all dissolve. I do like to add it to the microwave as well for about 15 to 20 seconds so that the heat helps with the dissolving process. You cannot tell me that this combination of music and slow burn food preparation isn't hitting you right in the dopamine. Much like a warm towel straight out of the dryer, making food and washing food getting made which should hopefully be a relaxing thing to do. For me, it's honestly one of my favorite things to do before I go to sleep at night, which can often be a double-edged sword. You know, I chill out, but I also tend to get hungry. With the rice fully saucy and enhanced, we want to divide it out so that we can cool it in the fridge. I kind of just eyeball it, but I guess you could measure it out like a nerd. Pretty easy so far, but I'd be lying if I said it wasn't about to get pretty intense. The rice is resting in the fridge, so let's get started on prepping everything else. It's veggie prep time. The only time I get to show off my okay knife skills that I have been developing over the better half of a year. I think it goes without saying that cutting up stuff extremely fast is like most of the appeal of cooking shorts, Instagram reels, and dare I say TikToks. With the jalapenones or jalapenos, thin slices are the way of great success. The sandwich is going to be extremely textured already, so we really just want the flavor, plus it'll make stacking everything easier when the time comes. You'll see what I mean later on. This sandwich is gonna get beefy. It might end up being pretty tall. Okay, so now it's time to peel a big meaty cucumber. If you've seen other videos of mine, you know I hate peeling pretty much anything, but at least cucumbers are generally one of the easier peels. Same with jalapenos, we want very thin slices. The cucumber and the jalapenos will balance each other out, and I also wanted the sandwich to be similar to a spicy tuna roll you get in a restaurant. Here's a trick when it comes to cutting boards. Lay a slightly damp paper towel underneath your board so that it doesn't move around. Also, since we're going to be slicing up tuna, I would advise against using a wooden cutting board. The goal is a cube and mince this large and in charge chunk of tuna so that we can eventually add it to a good deal of sauces and season it to make it a spicy blend. The tuna has a little bit more fat content than what I was hoping for, but it's still pretty nice. If your knife is properly sharpened, you should be able to cut through it like butter. Like I previously said, we want the tuna diced up, but varying in size and texture to keep your taste buds on the toes. For the flavoring, we're going to be using some sushi staples. A little bit of sesame oil. You universally love soy sauce to give it some additional umami flavor and saltiness. Toasted sesame seeds, some Japanese mayo, and some sriracha to make it spicy. Mix it around with your hands like an animal who doesn't own gloves. The sounds are not the most enjoyable thing to listen to, I will admit, but I power through. 
Our Shishi Big Mac is almost finished, but you can't have a Big Mac without Big Mac's secret sauce. Or in this case, we're gonna make a homemade yum yum sauce because it's sushi. Oh, yum yum sauce, what a magical concoction. Growing up, I would just lather. I know I mean lather. My fried rice and this stuff and never question what was even in it. I was a monster, but learning about cooking and ingredients has definitely been an adventure. My sauce today is going to be pretty bare bones, but it will get the job done. At the end of the day, yum yum sauce is pretty much just spicy mayo with a couple of additional seasonings. Alright, alright, the rice has been cooled down and ready to be formed into the rice patties or the so-called buns. Don't judge the process, it won't be pretty, but all that matters is that it's effective. I don't have a mold for any kind of buns, so I use the next best thing. A large tin of Starbucks hot cocoa mix that I saved since last Christmas. I carefully cut around the tin and the results weren't half bad. My high school gym teacher said I would never amount to anything, but look at me now. As we continue on in our quest for a Big Mac Gold, we need to create a mixture of flour and a little bit of cornmeal so that we can coat our beautiful rice patties for frying. This step isn't 100% necessary, but it allows the rice buns to be crispy on the outside while also being soft in the inside, like a burnt marshmallow while camping. Grab a patty and dredge it through the mixture. Try your best to coat it evenly. The moisture from the rice should really help with the mixture sticking. Repeat the process with all three buns. Yeah, that's looking pretty grand. I think these three are gonna fry up nicely. At this point, we really just need to fry our rice buns or whatever you wanna call them, rice patties. Let's heat up some peanut oil over there on the stovetop, and then we'll fry these bad boys up. Ladies and gentlemen, we are on the home stretch now. Can you feel it? Can you? I use peanut oil because fun fact, seed oils like vegetable and canola oil are destroying the world. We want the oil piping hot at least 350 degrees so that when we toss in the rice patty, it crisps up very quickly. Fantastic. It turned out better than I could have ever imagined. But now repeat for the other two and then we can move on to the last step, which is slicing up a ripe avocado. The rice patties buns are fried up. So now I'm gonna slice up an avocado and then we should be good to go. Continuing the theme of trying to teach stuff while being charismatic slash entertaining, a good way to manage an avocado for slicing is to quarter it instead of just cutting right down the middle. Doing so allows for easier peeling and getting the pit out is a piece of cake. The slices should be somewhat thin, but it's really up to you. I'm not really that concerned with avocado since it's already pretty gelatinous, and it will keep everything in place regardless. With everything finally prepped though, we can build our masterpiece. Let's start this long build with a single rice patty. Follow that up with a spread of our yum yum sauce. Throw on some seaweed salad that I bought at the store, cause why not? Next, we'll place down our avocado slices, followed by a good helping of our spicy tuna mixture. Then we can add some of our other prep toppings. Next, our crucial middle bun, another layer of yum yum, followed by slices of cucumber and then jalapenos. Top with another layer of spicy tuna, drizzle some kewpie over that, garnish once again, and then complete our sushi Big Mac with the top bun. I think we stayed true to the Big Mac vision. Let's cut it down the middle and see how it turned out. Definitely not perfect and as pretty, but a lot easier to eat. It's gonna get a little messy, but bon appetit. Mm, it's actually unreal. Thanks for watching, friends. Come back for more.